Hello students, I am Dr. Tanmay Vishash. I welcome you all in my channel Chemistry the Mystery of Molecules. Today's topic of discussion is about a butyl lithium reaction on this molecule. Actually, you may you haven't I guess encountered this molecule generally more. In this case, this nitrogen is attached to the carbon center. Okay. Now I guess you have encountered this molecule CH three C triple bond in. This is student acetonitrile. I guess many of you have seen this molecule as reagent or solvent, etc. In this case, the carbon attached atom directly attached to this nitro this carbon. So it's different. Now, first of all, this isocyanate is different. Now, second question comes will come that sir, this carbon act as electrophile why? In the next reaction step, you will see why. So actually, if you draw the canonical form, means this bond can come to nitrogen and nitrogen will be neutralized. So in this way, it can have an another canonical form. And by the way, if you look at this nitrogen center here, right now is sp hybridized. Not only that, this carbon is also sp hybridized. But when you come to this canonical form, then this nitrogen is sp2 hybridized. Obviously, this carbon is also sp2 hybridized. Now, I am telling it's sp2 hybridized means this carbon atom has six electron in its outermost valence shell, so it's a sextet. So that's why you can consider that this carbon center is electrophilic. It has a vacant orbital which can accept electron pair. So that's why nucleophilic attack or may happen on this carbon. And exactly that's happened because here butyl lithium is acting as nucleophile because butyl lithium can act as base and nucleophile both. Now let's go to the reaction step. So if you look at the mechanism, the first step of this reaction is nucleophilic addition by this butyl lithium on this isocyanide carbon fine so it will open up and in this way hybridization changes occur and it produce a carbon ion so this carbon ion is student actually this negative charge is on sp2 hybridized orbital it's significantly basic that's why it react with dod or d2o or heavy water and it get this deuterium so this is a simple acid based reaction and in this way it results in carbon deuterium bond formation. Now student if you look at this molecule literally carefully you will see that sir this is nothing but an imine or it's a ship base. So it's a ship base reaction ship base production and by the way I've already discussed a dedicated lecture on ship base please visit for better understanding. So this is a ship base formation. Now in the last step oxalic acid is given and which convert it into this imine into corresponding aldehyde and actually you may consider this is a simple hydrolysis reaction where two hydrogens were attached to this nitrogen and the remaining oxygen was attached to this carbon with a double bond okay so this thing now question why this oxalic acid is so much acidic to carry out such thing this is because if you look at the structure it is the first member of dicarboxylic acid not only that the two carboxylic acid are attached together or these two carbonyl groups are attached such a way that you can consider this part as one two dicarbonyl it means both group are withdrawing in nature which enhances the acidity of this oh that's why means obviously this also so that's why this is strong enough to hydrolyze the imine to corresponding aldehyde or more specifically if I say deuterium attached aldehyde. Now if you look at what are the key step and name reaction the first step is nucleophilic addition on this, uh, this isocyanate carbon second step is acid base reaction with this D2O and the third step is C base hydrolysis. So this is a hydrolysis reaction to produce this one now question now what is the answer obviously if you look at this deuterium attached butyl carbon it means this butyl aldehyde five carbon aldehyde okay butyl aldehyde with deuterium attached so butyl cdo i know student this presentation is little difficult as i told at the beginning reaction is easy but problem will not be presented such a easy way 
So this is the answer. Now, if this question appear in your exam less than 30 seconds, how can you come up to the right answer? For the purpose, you should know this isocyanate structure and reactivity where nucleophile attack may happen. Okay, so actually these butyl don't abstract this proton instead of it attacks as nucleophile. So if you know these information, simple these option, these option gone point number one so you know this attack will happen after that there is a d2o means that sp2 carbonion will be attached to deuterium this part we understand so the aldehyde part will have deuterium it's true but in this option see no deuterium so this is gone option d left it is the right answer now in conclusion what you have learned today that isocyanates are carbon based electrophile although it has one negative charge on this carbon atom okay and nucleophile can attack on the nitrogen center as means cannot attack because this pentavalency on nitrogen is not possible because it do not have that vacant d orbital so that's why nucleophilic attack will happen on the carbon atom which is actually six electron species and this butyl lithium is very reactive it can act as base it can act as nucleophile here is acting as a nucleophile and it attacks the isocyanate carbon atom because of six electron configuration now, vinyl carbonion is more stable than butyl because vinyl carbonion is sp2 hybridized, butyl, butyl carbonion is sp3 hybridized. So, bu this butyl carbonion is more reactive reagent due to this S character. Now, finally, water uh, or D2O, it's a polar molecule and it reacts with this sp2 carbonion and uh, selectively to protonate this and since i have taken deuterium so de deuterate them it you can consider more accurately now imine can undergo hydrolysis to the corresponding its carbonyl derivative using uh, not only water actually water is not enough this presence of acid or base is essential for this hydrolysis and oxalic acid in this context significantly acidic you can see the pk 1.25 significantly stronger if you look at this acetic acid 4.74 pk just see the difference so from there you can consider how much strong this oxalic acid is due to the adjacent carbonyl groups so this is the end of this question i believe this video will be useful i thank you everyone for watching this video if you really enjoy my teaching please help this channel to grow and you may visit my two other channels so this is the end of this question see you in my next video take care bye bye